everybody, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today to do a Q&A session. So thank you to everybody who's taken part. Today I'm going to be answering your questions. If you'd like to take part in future Q&As, please pop your questions in the comments below and I'll answer them in another video soon. So everything I talk about today, as always, is available on our lovely website. I've got some great sewing topics to cover for you today. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe because every Friday I bring you another video pack full of sewing goodness. So the first question is from Irene Dale who said she would like to find, like to know how to find the straight of grain on stretch fabrics that have curled edges after you've pre-washed them. She said she's tried ironing um, starch on the edges and it really puts her off working with these fabrics because she's just so worried about getting it right. So I feel your pain, Irene. We've all been there. It is annoying. It really is when you're working with those fabrics that curl up at the end. I know exactly what you mean. Um, it's worth just mentioning that some of them don't. So there's some great um, crepe sort of jerseys that we've got and we've had some good cotton jerseys that don't curl up at the ends as well. So some of them won't do that. Sometimes the manufacturer puts a little bit of glue along the selvages um, which you could perhaps do at home if you wanted to because you know you're not going to use the selvages you're going to be cutting sort of away from that so I know that that happens sometimes manufacturers put a little bit of glue along the edges but here's what I think anyway so the reason why we cut on the straight of grain is because if we don't the fabric won't hang properly and if it's cut really really badly off grain as is often the case with um, some of the cheaper ready to wear clothing um, have you ever had one of those t-shirts where it sort of twists at the side seams well that's because it hasn't been cut on the straight of grain so that's what we're trying to avoid um, however what I will say is when it's twisted so badly like that they haven't just missed the straight of grain by a little bit they have literally not even considered it when they've cut that garment out so I know this for a fact I know somebody who worked in that side of things for one of the big high street chain brands clothing brands over here um, and she actually told me that they literally just place the pattern pieces on the fabric whichever way is the best way to maximize the use of that fabric so they do not consider the straight of grain so that's why you get those like horror story t-shirts that really twist now my reason for telling you that is because as much as you know you want to get it absolutely spot on in my experience if you're a little bit out or it's not like 100% perfect it's not going to be a problem I don't spend hours and hours and hours making sure it's absolutely perfectly on grain with those fabrics and some people might tell me off for saying that maybe but you know I've sewn a hell of a lot of jersey garments and I've never had an issue I do spend time I do try and make sure that the fabric's lining up properly. I do line the selvages up. I do measure the width of the fabric once it's folded and try and make sure it's the same width all the way down. But you know, I don't go into to any massive lengths. I just try and make sure that it looks like it's on the straight of grain. However, if you really want to be absolutely 100% sure and you're not happy with, with my sort of approach of doing the best you possibly can and, and probably getting it right most of the time, maybe just being ever so slightly off sometimes, what you can do is you can use the little lines that you'll find on the fabric to find a perfect line down the centre of the fabric or down your fold. So, down your fold, sorry, of the fabric. So a jersey knit has a wrong side and a right side. And I've got to look at this because I always forget which way round they are, but the right side has tiny little vertical lines, almost like a rib on the surface, while the wrong side has no vertical lines and looks like there's a horizontal or like knitted texture to it. So, and, and another way to tell the right side and the wrong side is that the right side of the cotton, the selvages um, curl towards the wrong side. So the right side is the side that the selvages aren't curling towards. Just so you know, because that can be quite tricky as well. Now, if you want to be really, really on point with this, when you fold the fabric, you can use the vertical uh, striped rib lines, which are along the... Um, 
right side you can use one of those as your gauge and and you can make sure you've got one of them on the fold and that you follow that all the way down the fold so that you're perfectly on grain and as you fold the fabric you can pin it in place along the fold so that you know it's perfectly positioned and then you can just smooth the fabric away from the fold so if you if you really want to be 100% confident you've got it absolutely bang on that's one way that you can do it I'm sure there are other ways as well if any anybody's got any of those that they'd like to share please pop them in the comments below but my advice in my experience is you know I wouldn't lose any sleep over it I do do my best to make sure that it's on the straight of grain but you know it, I don't spend hours and hours doing that so you know just go for it Irene you're going to love sewing with cotton jersey I'm sure and you can make some great really wearable garments with it as well the next question is what can you do on a cover stitch machine so I think a lot of people would probably like to know this and I think the important thing to say is cover stitch machines are predominantly for sewing hems on knit and jersey fabrics but you can sew them on woven fabrics as well so um, the reason they're great is because they sew a parallel line of stitches on the right side of the garment and then on the wrong side you get like a lovely overlocking stitch so it looks really really professional and much more professional you, you're going to really struggle to get those sorts of results by using a twin needle on your sewing machine the stitch on the back's like a zigzag so it's not the nice sort of overlock professional looking stitch and you often find with sewing with a twin needle that you'll get tunneling so even if you adjust the tensions and things and mess around with it quite often between the two parallel lines of stitching the fabric will sort of tunnel it will create like a little groove um, so giving using a cover stitch machine that that won't happen the tensions will be right the stitch has also got more give in it so it's great for stretch fabrics it's great for active wear and swimwear and things like that because you really have got a lot more give in it but I'll just show you I've brought some examples in to show you of the stitch so this is a t-shirt that I made which the, the stitching's in white, so you probably going you might struggle to see the parallel lines of stitching there on the right side, but you will see that lovely overlocked finish on the wrong side there. It just looks so neat and professional. And it's just really easy, you know, you've not got to sit there faffing around with your sewing machine for ages, trying different tensions, testing on scraps of fabric, you know, with a good cover stitch machine, you put the fabric under the machine and it goes, you know, and it's absolutely wonderful from that point of view. You can also use it to create some nice decorative stitches as well. So this is a good example. This is a hoodie that I made. And you can see there that I've stitched that V on the front of the sweatshirt. So that's a really professional looking, I hope you think. You might disagree, you might not think it is. But you know, a really professional finishing touch to a knit garment. And I did that with um, a triple cover stitch and I sewed from the wrong side of the garment. So that's like the over, you can use the overlocking stitch on the right side of the garment as a decorative effect and I've done that also on this t-shirt here I'll just show you on the hems um, of the sleeves I think you can see that there I did like a little two thread um, cover stitch where I used the wrong side on the right side of the fabric there just to give it a little bit of interesting detail so there's lots of lovely things like that you can do you can really go for it on active wear as, as well as I say um, so yeah it is a fantastic piece of equipment to have in my opinion it just takes all the headaches out of sewing um, hems on jersey and knit fabrics um, some cover stitches like I say do two rows or three rows of stitching not all some of them will do chain stitching as well which is great for like tacking things um, and just if you really want to achieve a professional finish if you want minimal fuss and you can afford it in my opinion it's a great investment Next question was for, from Colette Noak who asked, can you recommend a pattern or patterns for active wear? Now I've got to hold my hands up here and say I still haven't sewn any active wear. So what I did was I went to a good friend of mine, Melissa Fair, who runs her own independent pattern company, Fair Trade, that's F-E-H-R, Trade. Um, and she's written a fantastic book which holds your hand all the way through from choosing your fabrics, um, 
understanding different adaptations you might want to make um, talks about fit and also gives you some great beginner very basic beginner blocks as well um, and she recommended that book for any sort of budding active wear sewists out there and Melissa's really highly regarded in the sewing community I've seen her garments made so many times on Instagram and I really rate her work so I'm happy to sort of mention that and say you know I think that would be a good recommendation but the other patterns that Melissa recommended that we sell on our site are the Jarley patterns. So this is a Canadian company and they really specialise in active wear. There's some really super popular patterns. These Cora tights, for example, um, I know they've been incredibly popular over the years. Um, this Anne-Marie uh, sort of tennis outfit, I think one of the contestants made this on the British Sewing Bee last year, my friend Ali, I think she made a gorgeous version of this. Um, they also do things like sports bras, Melissa said, one of the sports bras she made from this brand was absolutely fantastic. And then they do things like the hoodie I've just shown you, that was um, something I made, um, sort of fun little running tops and things like that. So. I think they, they, these are very, very highly regarded. We sell so many of them. People love them. Um, and they also do active, they also do sort of leotards and gymnastics and skating um, patterns as well. And, you know, I know they are really highly regarded. So if they can get those sorts of patterns right, um, they're a great brand to go with. Susie asked... Um, how do you line a lightweight coat that is not lined as per the pattern? So Susie, I think the important thing to say here, I, I haven't done any tailored jacket making myself. So I spoke to Angela, my mother-in-law, who's done loads. Um, and also Irena, who, who also works in the office and has done this sort of work. And both of them said, in all honesty, it's an incredibly difficult thing to undertake. Um, there's a lot of different considerations for it. So I've got a tailored jacket here to show you. Um, just to explain some of the issues that you might come across. So this is a ready-to-wear jacket that I, I had years ago. Um, but where you've got the facings, what well, one of the co considerations you have to make is you'll have facings on the inside of the jacket. So your lining will need to take into account those facings and be shorter or narrower um, to allow for those facings. You've then got to also take into account your seam allowances. Um, you have to allow for the fit as well on the lining so you'll often find there's a pleat or there'll usually be a pleat on the lining down the back of the jacket the lining usually has to be longer than the jacket as well and have room for maneuver for when you sit down um, and for when you move um, some of the other considerations they mentioned were um, yeah ju just those sorts of things that you know you need to take into account the movement you need to take into account the facings the seam allowances there's a lot to it you know it, it would be a full tutorial to explain that and um there are some good tutorials on youtube you could watch for that um but it might be worth you know if you're not confident at having a go at that it might be worth um, just choosing a pattern that has a lining or perhaps considering doing some nice Hong Kong seam finishes or um, bias bound seam finishes. We've got a tutorial on our channel of how to do those if you're interested but that's when um, the seam is finished with a lovely little bit of binding. You know some of those finishes could be a nice alternative to you, for you and I hate to be, so I feel like I'm being negative there because my mantra on this channel is always have a go, have a go, you know take the plunge, what, what have you got to lose? Um, but I just wanted to be really honest on this one because two really experienced sewists, Angela's been sewing like for 70 years nearly now I think it is, um, you know both of them said it is difficult but it is doable and if you want to have a go get on and have a look at some of those detailed YouTube videos but just be aware that it, it is quite a tricky task to undertake so I wanted to be honest about that. Um, Johanna at the other end of the scale is a complete beginner um, and she said should you finish sewing um, for the day when you finish sewing for the day should you leave your presser foot up or down now in my opinion Johanna it really doesn't matter my machine automatically puts the foot up when I finish sewing so that's how I leave mine however when you buy a new sewing machine they always come with the foot down um, what is important though and a lot of people don't realize this is that when you thread your machine it is absolutely crucial that the foot's up because if the foot's 
it's not earth, it doesn't engage the tension discs and then you won't always have the right tension when you thread the needle and that can cause you stitch quality problems so it's always worth remembering that, always have your foot up when you thread your machine. And then the next question, it's going to have to be the last one, these sessions always go so quickly, but um, Christy Campbell asked about the interfacings I use for jersey neckbands. So I just wanted to show you these, Christy. Um, I use, what I tend to do most of the time is for my neckbands, so for the little rectangle bit of fabric that you sort of fold in half like that and attach to, to the top like so, for this, what I do is I use our Admiral Stretch Interfacing, which is an iron-on interfacing. I've got the black here, we do it in white as well. Um, and this interfacing has actually got stretch to it. So I iron that onto the neckband because I just like to give the neckband a little bit of extra stability, a bit more body, because um, I just think it sits more nicely then, just looks a bit more professional, and it's kind of how the neckbands are on a lot of ready-to-wear tops but that's just a personal preference it's not necessary but that's what I like to do and then in addition to that what I usually do as well is I use some of this seam tape by Visaline we also do a prim version as well again this comes in white or black um, and again this is a fusible iron-on tape which can be used in any number of areas on stretch and jersey fabrics, um, round armholes or necklines, sometimes on hems as well if you're a bit worried they might stretch out. And again, this is designed to be used with those fabrics. It just irons on, you iron it on inside the seam allowance and it will just prevent the fabric from stretching out. So what I usually do, I've just got a, a little mock-up here, this isn't a real neckline, but I would just place this around the edge of the neckline and iron it on after I've cut the pieces of the uh, fabric out. You could sort of overlap the edge a bit if you want to, if you need to make it narrower, if you want like a 3 8 seam. But if it's a 5 8 seam, I think this takes about half an inch. So you can just iron it on round the edge like that, all the way round. Um, and it just gives it some stability um, and just prevents it from stretching out as you sew. So that's what I like to do. Those tips work really well for me. And like I say, if I've got a really flimsy jersey, I might put some around the hem before I sew that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that today, everybody. I should also mention, if you like what you see today, pop onto our Instagram account and have a look there as well, because a lot of the tips I share on here are going into real detail, and there's quite detailed photos on our Instagram account, so that's So Essential UK. I'm gonna start putting a link to that below for you. Um, but yeah, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, so I'll bring you a video every Friday. If you've got any questions for next time, pop them in the comments below and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.